Welcome to lecture 22, which will cover gestures, sign language, and bilingualism. And this first segment will focus on gestures. Now, when I was a kid, it was, at least in my house, considered rude to gesture while you were speaking in public. That turns out to be a strange belief because everyone gestures and we gesture even when people aren't looking at us. So talking over the phone, not FaceTime, but just talking over the phone where all someone has is your voice, we still gesture. Congenitally blind people gesture, even when they're talking to other blind people. So gesture is not exactly what you think. It's not separate from speech. It's a part of language. It's an inherent part of language. It is deeply connected to all of your cognitive processes related to language. Speakers of all languages gesture, but people who speak different languages gesture in slightly different ways. We um, seem to use gestures to communicate spatial information uh, more effectively, to convey information about the body, to emphasize certain points. And the really interesting thing about gestures is gestures are tied to the particular language that you're using, and they are not something that we learn by watching other people speak or gesture. You would think that sighted people gesture because they see other people doing it, but that's not it. Listen to this great study by uh, a wonderful researcher at the University of Chicago named Susan Golden Meadow. And what she did was first to create her stimuli, she made these scenes, these physical scenes like you see in the picture here. Um, so this is a picture of a like a Barbie doll running into a house. And she asked sighted, blindfolded, and congenitally blind people to feel each of the little dioramas that she made to feel what was happening and then to describe them. That was it. Feel, figure out what's going on in each of these displays and describe it. So if I were going to do that um, with uh, the Barbie doll setup that you see here, I might say something like uh, a woman is running into a house or a Barbie doll is running into a house and that's it. But what she was looking at was how people gestured when they were describing what was happening. And she had people who spoke two different languages, English and Turkish. So she recruited blind people who spoke Turkish and blind people who spoke English and sighted people who spoke either Turkish or English. And the sighted people could be either blindfolded or not blindfolded. Now you might think that sighted people and blind people would gesture differently. It turns out they don't. What determined how someone gestured in this study was not whether they were sighted or blind. It was what language they spoke. So people who spoke Turkish, whether they were blind or sighted, gestured in the same way. People who spoke English, uh, whether they were blind or sighted, gestured in the same way. It's amazing, right? So why do we gesture? Well, we gesture because it improves our communication. People understand us better if we gesture, especially when it comes to trying to convey spatial information like he went that way or fish was this big. If someone tells you you can't gesture, like my mom did, don't gesture, it's bad, it turns out if you're not gesturing, you have more trouble speaking, producing language. Why? Well, it turns out that gestures are a sort of motor prime. They help us to find or prime us to find the words we're looking for. Gestures help people learn language and people who gesture are better able to solve problems because it turns out gestures change the way we think about things. And gestures are amazing. 